So I've had a few questions about the finding the monthly payment uh, problem. Um, so I figured I'd just make a video since some of you are having this question and I'll try to help you out. So for this one it says that somebody is trying to take a loan for $100,000 and repayments be made in loan of 60 equal payments at 6.75% interest. All right, so if we look at the formula, so I put the formula right here. So the formula says that the monthly payments are equal to uh, the principles, so that's what um, you're taking out for the entire length of the loan, uh, times R over 12, so that's the rate that you have. And here we're divided by 12 because it's monthly. This problem would actually change if you had something like quarterly payments or something like that, because then it would become four. But for our purposes, we're talking about monthly payments, so that's why it's a formula for 12. So that's 12 does not change there. And R in this case should be a decimal. So if you look back at our problem, our interest was 6.75%, so 6.75% in this case is going to become 0.0675% like I have here if you move the decimal place over 2 or divide by 100, whatever you want to think about it there. And then um, you have 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R over 12 to the N. Kind of a complicated formula, but you do need to have practice using this. Uh, so I'm going to plug in everything I have. So for R, like I said, it's 6.75% interest, so we get 0.0675 and plug it here and then plug it here. Uh, the N is how many times you're going to make that payment. So in our case, it says in the problem that it's going to be 60 equal payments. In our case, it says 60 equal payments, but if you had another problem that said something like, uh, you know, we're going to take this loan out over the course of five years, you'd have to realize that there are 60 months in five years. So remember that. Don't get tricked up if you ever see something like that. Like if it said the loan was for four years, how many months are in four years? Well, that would make the problem 48. So in most cases, your promissory note will say the number of payments they're going to be because that's kind of something they have to do. But if they don't, make sure that you don't uh, mess up and put the wrong number in there. Because if I put like 5 instead of 60 here, it would make a much smaller payment and you would be very uh, confused. All right, so what I'm going to do, so I plugged in all my numbers here for that problem just to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to use just a basic calculator. A lot of you guys probably have a scientific calculator, but I'm going to show you that you can do this with a regular calculator too. Um, so I'm going to copy my little thing here and put it here. All right. So what I'm going to do is kind of walk through this just step by step. And I really highly recommend, I know a lot of students are, uh, for some reason, not writing down steps a lot anymore. I don't know about you guys, but I see that happening. Don't do that because you, you need to write down steps. So I'm going to do these two divisions first. I'm going to do 0.0675 divided by 12 so that I can get rid of that first. Divided by 12. I get 0.005625. I'm going to go ahead and put all that in there. 0.005625625. And just erase those. Don't worry about like trying to format this and how I'm typing it in here. You will not have to know how to do that unless you become a math teacher one day. Which would be fantastic if you did. That would be awesome. Alright, so I'm going to keep going. So that was my first step I did. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and combine this fraction. So 1 plus 0 0.005625, well, that's just going to be 1.05625. It's kind of cool how it did that, isn't it? Um, and then I'm going to do 1 divided by this, okay? And now this 60 thing, I can see where that might be a little confusing. Uh, this raised to the 60th power, it's not 1 minus this to the 60th power. It's just this thing here to the 60th power, okay? So I'm just going to do that real quick, too. So I'm going to do 1 divided by... 1.005625. I get this. And if I raise that to the 60th power, so if you have a scientific calculator, you're going to use this key. If you've got like a regular graphing calculator, it's a little caret symbol. But I'm going to hit raise to the 60th power. And I get 0.7142. I'm going to use five decimals. 0.71423. So I'm going to change that. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. You guys can see this too. So this number here becomes 0 0.71423. I almost remembered it. 71423. Ah, I got it right. Okay. Now I'm going to do my subtraction on the bottom here. You see how it's kind of painful to do it step by step, but you kind of have to. So I'm going to do 1 minus 0.71423 and replace that there. I'm going to go ahead and copy it again. I'm going to let you guys keep this too. So 1 minus 0 0.74123, 0 0.71423, 
equals 0.28557. So I'm going to change that. Oops. 0.28577. Okay. All right. And then look how much simpler it's gotten. You see how I'm taking this step by step? I'm using the order of operations, as you probably learned back in algebra, and I'm making this thing get narrower and narrower. So now I'm just going to do this, what's inside the parentheses first, this divided by that, and then multiply by 100,000 and see what my monthly payment is. So let's see, 0 0.005625 divided by 0.28577 equals 0 0.0196. And is it okay to just go ahead and say times 100,000? I think y'all could probably figure that one out. I get 1968.37. $1,96,837. And I use two decimals here on purpose because it's money, and usually with money we talk about things in terms of uh, two decimals because we think about, um, think about cents, right? But actually when you're thinking about monthly payments, sometimes they just go and round them off. Um, I'm not going to round it off here. I think about my own monthly payments for my car and my house, and I still pay cents for them. But sometimes you might see them rounded off. And I wanted to go see if that was the same thing that uh, we got in the homework answer. So if you look in the homework answers, they actually got 1968.35. And that is not uncommon for those, those decimals to be off a little bit. And that comes from rounding errors. It just comes from the fact that I rounded things differently. Um, but for your sake, I mean, if a test or something and you're off by like even 10 or 20 cents, I'm not going to count it off. It's obviously just a rounding problem there. Uh, also, just to show you this, because I don't know if many of you all have seen this yet, and you, of course, can use your notes and things on tests, but you can't use uh, the stuff that's on the um, website for your test. But if you look here, um, there is, if I look up, just say I Google just a monthly payment calculator on Google, you'll find them super easy, and this would be a good way to test yourself. Oh my god, I keep having these pop-ups. All right. Um, so if you look here, like if I take the more, I'm not going to, I don't want to take that. I'm going to take a payment calculator. Let's do this one. I, any of these. I haven't looked them up. You can just like kind of play with them and see which one uh, will work for you. So for our case, our loan amount was $100,000. And we were doing 60 months, so that's five years. And the interest rate was, hmm, what was it? How quickly we forget? 6.75%. If I calculate that, dun, 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 I get 1968.35. See, it gets the same thing that I got. Um, actually, I'm still up just because of my own uh, decimals there. But see, it can tell me the monthly payment, the time for it to clear. So if you guys are ever looking for loans for yourself, like if you're trying to figure out uh, whether you can afford a loan or how much you're going to pay in the long run, um, look up on these payment calculators. Like it's great for you to be able to do the math, but if you're doing it really quick, I've done this before in the past for myself when I'm trying to take out a loan for something to figure out how long it'll take. Because here it tells you the total cost for the payments is $118,000 and the total interest is $18,100. So feel free to use this to check yourself, uh, but do make sure that you know how to use this formula. It is important. So if you have any more questions about that, let me know. I'll post this little page I just did here on Blackboard for you all to use too as an example. Okay. Uh, if you have no more questions, feel free to ask.